I'm trying to get an early start on supper today. I'm going to be using my crock pot. That always makes, makes the end of the day much easier. I'm a real morning person. Into the evening hours and night, I get to where uh, I'm kind of like a child. I need to be put to bed. I do better early in the morning. So I always like to get, get a plan going of what I'm going to do for supper so that during my busy day, I don't have to worry about that. And I'm just going to make an easy roast. This is a beef sirloin roast. It's all just from the grocery store. I'm going to use Granny's recipe. Granny likes to do this. She'd do it uh, when I was growing up, especially in the last probably 15 years. She got to where she really likes to do this is because she uses the crock pot, makes it easy. And I bet this is a recipe that you're very familiar with. I've, I know lots of different people who make it. But you use a little packet of Lipton onion soup. That's what Granny uses. And you just sprinkle it over your roast in the crock pot there. And you can use potatoes or whatever you want to to go with it. And then that's it. That's all you do. I don't have uh, any Lipton and I wanted to make some. I wanted to make this though and I, I prefer to make my own just because you, then you know exactly what's going into your little packet instead of the unknown, all those big words that you can't even uh, say. So you can look online and find all kinds of copycat recipes for that little packet of soup. So that's what I've done and what or what I do and what I'm going to make. So here I have my, this is just the one that I use. There's all kinds of them. So you can just do a quick search and find them. And I'll put the link to this one though in the description below. But you need three cups of dried minced onion. And it says onion flakes found in the spi uh, spice aisle. I've always just seen the dried minced onions. I don't know about the flakes. So I guess it'd be the same thing though, but I've got that. You need, um, I'm gonna skip back, skip over one and I'll tell you about it, but one tablespoon plus one teaspoon of onion powder. So I got that. I had to go to Granny's and get it though. I was out. One fourth teaspoon of celery seeds. Got that. One fourth teaspoon of granulated sugar. One fourth teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. And one eighth teaspoon of paprika. And then you just mix it all together. Now the one I skipped over is one third cup beef bouillon powder. I don't have that and that's just not something that I buy. So what I do is I'm gonna go ahead and be mixing all my all my little spices together here. Doesn't take but just you know, it smells so good because of those because of those onions. But what I do is I just use um, beef stock. I just put put some because it's it's not gonna be dry like this, but I put mix some up in a with water, uh, or if I've got the, today I've got a um, carton of it, but if I don't have that, I just mix up the little, I don't know if you've ever used that better than, better than beef or better than chicken. It's like a little base of stock that you, comes in a little jar and then you just mix it with water. Um, and the best though is if you have homemade, much, much better than that. And this is much better than that that comes in a little jar, but you could do either. Anyway, I mix that up or I use just regular beef stock and I just pour a little bit around the roast, probably a fourth of a cup, something like that, pour it over top of it. And that's how I replace that part. But now that I've got this mixed up, that's how easy it is. Of course, if you use an envelope, you just open it. I'll have that ready to put on my roast I've got here. And then I've cut up some potatoes to go underneath just so we'll have some. I was going to do an onion, but I decided I'm not going to. I'm not going to put an onion in it. And then I didn't have any carrots, but I have butternut squash. So I used one of our butternut squash that we grew last year, last summer. Isn't it amazing? This is March. Hard to believe how time flies by, but it's just been sitting over there in my in my kitchen waiting on me till I needed it. And so today's the day that, that I need it. I'm just going to pour all of my potatoes and my butternut in there. I'm going to spoon some of my dried soup mixture uh, over the top and then I'm going to turn it upside down so that way it'll be on, kind of be on both sides. I'm making a mess, which is typical with my cooking. I reckon it don't matter since I'm the one that has to clean it up. Now, since I'm going to use beef broth, I'm just going to pour a little around the edges. Woo! I don't know, maybe a half a cup or something like that. 
It might have been more like three-fourths of a cup. And I've got it on low. I'm going to put the lid on. And it'll just be cooking for the rest of the day while I'm going about doing the other things I need to do. It's getting late in the day, but I'm trying to hurry and make a dessert. I've been wanting to make it all day, but I didn't have all the ingredients. That's when it's really nice to live by somebody like Granny so that I can go barry. This morning I had to barry um, the onion powder. And then now to make this dessert, I had to barry. I didn't have any graham crackers to make my own crust. And then she had a crust. I didn't have any graham cracker crust. Really super easy recipe to make. I just should have made it earlier so it could have time to actually farm up in the refrigerator before supper. I'm going to put it in the freezer for about 15 minutes and then put it in the refrigerator and hope that helps. I don't know if it will or not. We may be eating it and it may be uh, still very runny. But it's like a no-bake cheesecake. Super easy. I've shared the video a long time ago when I first started on YouTube. But you just need a graham cracker crust. You can make your own. I think they're better if you make them. But you can certainly use a store-bought, which is what I'm doing today. It takes one 8-ounce block of cream cheese. I have that already all. I've got all the stuff already mixed up. So it takes one 8-ounce block of cream cheese, one third cup of lemon juice, one teaspoon of vanilla. And that's it. That's how easy it is. It's so easy. You just mix all that together and whip it up till it's light and fluffy. Pour it in your pie shell and then let it firm up in the refrigerator. That's the part I've kind of waited, waited too late, but... I'm just determined to do it anyway. So it'd be good. It tastes good even if you do it like that. You know, if you were to start eating it right now, it just won't be as firm. It's nicer when it is firm. But everyone here really likes this recipe and it's really easy to whip up. And I usually keep the all the ingredients on hand, but this time I didn't. I don't remember if I said, but I actually had to borrow the cream cheese from Granny too. So the only thing I had was the lemons for lemon juice and the sweetened condensed milk. Did I even say that? No, I didn't. Gosh, that's how fast I'm going. So this, let me just start all over. I'm just going quick. Yeah. I'm just like in such a hurry. I'm like thinking, why did he even say nothing about sweetened condensed milk? Okay. Now let's start over on the recipe. You actually need eight ounces of cream cheese. I said that. You need one third cup of lemon juice. I said that. You need the vanilla, one teaspoon of vanilla. I said that, but I did not say you need a can of sweetened condensed milk. That's what makes it sweet. I bet you was thinking, well, that's going to be an awful sour kind of pie tipper. So you don't forget the sweetened condensed milk. I had to borrow that from Granny. No, I didn't have to borrow that. I had to borrow the cream cheese. Goodness. Bless your heart. I know. I'm having a time of it today. I had to take Granny. I've had a million things to do, and then I had to stop and take Granny to the doctor. So we just got back from that, which was... I, I should have went this morning when I realized I wanted to do this and borrow the shell, pie shell from her and the cream cheese. But I was like, no, i got to go down there anyway to take her to the doctor. But I should have went on, and it could have been chilling in the refrigerator. So now on the top of it, a lot of people will put... Um, you can put, you know, think about cherries, and Granny was telling me because we were, I was wanting to borrow this stuff from her, or the pie shell and the cream cheese from her on the way to work, way to work. <laughs> now I'm taking Granny to work. Bless your heart, you're having a day. I am day. having a day. Okay. On the way to the doctor, Have Granny told me that her sister Faye, my Aunt Faye, she said she, for a long time, she made one of those no baked cheesecakes every Sunday for dinner and put cherries on it and she said and we all just loved it said so she made them for ages and we loved them anyway I never put anything on the top of mine you could I before just to be kind of if we were having company or something I've put blueberries fresh blueberries that's really pretty you could put fresh strawberries um, the cherries that granny was talking about is kind of like the cherry pie filling I know you've seen you know kind of with the jelly along with it so you could do that you could do any kind of fruit would be really pretty. I've also seen people just crumble up the graham cracker crumbs and sprinkle them on top. And that's pretty. That's a little something. But I usually don't do anything. I just leave it just like this. Now I'm just going to have to hope that it hardens up, firms up before we are ready to eat it after supper. I'm ready to finish up the last little bit of supper. I've got my cornbread pan heating up in the oven. Got my cornbread here ready to mix up. I had to change my apron because I was lured by the beautiful day that we're having here in the southern mountains of Appalachia today. It's just like a summer day outside. It is so beautiful. 
just beautiful sky, little clouds, but just here and there, and uh, beautiful sunshine and warm, warm temperatures. I think the rain's supposed to come back by tomorrow, but it's just beautiful, beautiful day. And I went out there, and then I seen this that needed to be done, and then I seen this, and before I knew it, I had gotten dirty, so I had to had to change my change my apron. Now, for my cornbread, I've shared my recipe lots of times. I have a video. I think whatever batter you use, the secret is using a cast iron pan that gets really hot in the oven first. Like when it's my oven's coming to heat, I cook my cornbread at 450. I grease it really good, put it in there and let it, while the oven is heating up, the pan is also heating up. And for the basic recipe, it's the one that Granny uses and the what I've always used as far as my batter goes. So I have two cups of cornmeal, and I use self-rising cornmeal, so that means it already has the leavening in there. I use um, one and one-third cups of milk. We don't use buttermilk, but you could. And then I use a fourth of cup of oil. I usually use olive oil. Granny would use vegetable oil and an egg, and that's all. Now, I always loved white lily self-rising cornmeal mix. That was my favorite. That's what Granny grew up, you know, what I grew up with Granny using each week. At Christmas, my friend Ginger got me a, just, she had bought a big bag, so she just put some out in a Ziploc bag for me, but that was part of the little present that she brought me, and it was Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone is from Booneville, North Carolina, like a family-owned place, kind of, and it was uh, self-rising it was already self-rising, so I didn't have to worry about that. And I thought, well, okay, I'll try it. I'll try it. And I just love it. I think it's better than White Lily. So my problem is now I need to, I guess, go to Boonville and see if I can find some. I did find it on, I think I found it. They don't, I couldn't tell from their website that they sell it. No, I didn't call them. If you called them, they might be able to sell it to you and ship it. But I did find it on Amazon, but it's pretty expensive. But the reason that Ginger knew about it was one of her, her friends, um, real nice lady. She goes with her mother, and I don't know how they found out about it, but they'll go and buy like a 50-pound bag or something at a time, and then put it up, and you know, I guess they divide it between their family. Maybe they keep it in the freezer, but then that does them for a good long while. So I may, I like it so much, I'm thinking I've never been to Boonville, but maybe, maybe I need to go. Now, another thing that I decided I would do, I went outside while I was out there being lured by the beauty, and checking on my little seedlings that we have planted, the things we planted in the yard. And I have kale up, and I have radishes up, and I guess some lettuce up. Still no carrots or parsnips, or no onions. I planted some onions out there. But I did have onions still growing from last year, from last fall that I planted. So I, they may be so, there goes my oven. They may be so strong that we can't really uh, stand them, but I've got some of them to bring in. Now what happens if you let them overwinter like that, the, this one, like I've already cleaned it up, you can tell, looks just like a green onion. Here's one of the ones I left so that I could show you. You can see the, I've already cut the little roots off of it. But I just kind of peel off those outer layers, which is what you would do in the, you know, in the, even in the summer if you were eating green onions. But you have to peel a, a lay, more layers off after being out there in the winter. The outer ones kind of get soggy and then just trim, trim off the bottom. That one has a little bit left there I need to trim. And then I trim the tops. Most of them I trimmed out there though, just so I could I could throw down the greens out there. Of course, these are edible. We eat these, but I just cut off the raggedy top ones. And a lot of people, I've never tried this just because we kind of try to plant succession of green onions in the spring of the year, and then we even plant them in the fall. A lot of people leave the, I didn't really leave, this one's got a little bit of the roots, but it had a whole lot more than that. They'll leave those roots in the ground and just cut right above it, take your knife and cut right above it, and then the roots will grow another onion. Now, I've never tried that, but people tell me that. So I'm gonna finish trimming, trimming these up. This one's just a little bitty one. And get all those kind of soft parts off on the outside. And got to get my cornbread mixed up and have put it in. And the only other thing, since I put the potatoes and the butternut squash in with the roast, that's pretty much a meal if you had that in cornbread. But the only other thing, there's one more I got to trim, that I wanted to do is I brought up a jar of my, it's the first time I ever made it last year was the canned coleslaw and we've just been eating it like straight out of the jar. Now a lot of you told me that I should 
I could drain it and then mix it with mayonnaise and it would be more like a coleslaw. So I don't know. I should try that at least with a, let's cut those little tips off that one. I should try that. I don't know how many more jars I've got left. This may be the very last jar. So I don't know. I'll have to, I guess I should ask everybody's opinion that's here. Everybody's here but Austin and see if they want me to mix it with mayonnaise or if they want me to leave it like it is. Let me set this over here and wash my hands. Mix up my cornbread real quick. I've already got my milk and my oil in here. I'm going to add my egg and mix it. Mix it in pretty good. Of course, you could use uh, bacon grease in your cornbread. That would be really good. I know a lot of people do that. You could use butter. A lot of people do that too, I think. I've had a lot of people ask me uh, since I've been doing videos over the past few years, and sometimes they'll watch that cornbread video and ask me, well, how do I keep my cornbread from being crumbly? Well, crumbly is kind of the nature of, corn, of cornbread, but I did find like a, I thought, well, I don't know. I've never thought about it. So I did like a search and I found a website that kind of talks about that. So I, I could leave that link in the description below. But for me, it's, you know, that's just kind of the nature is of cornbread in one way. It's not like, in other words, it's not like biscuit bread or even like loaf bread or a sourdough or something like that. It has got a crumblier texture. Now that I've got that mixed up, I just need to get my hot pan. I don't know if I should set it, set it on there and I'll burn my board and leave a big ring on it probably. I'll put it on the oven mitt. You hear that sizzle? That's what... The crust, I like all the cornbread, but the crust is definitely my favorite part. Okay, now I've got to figure out the slaw, and then once this is done, we'll be ready to eat. So I think that I said what temperature I cooked the cornbread on, which is 450, but I don't think I said how long. For 20 minutes, 20 minutes in my oven. Now I always like to say your oven may cook a little faster or may cook a little slower, so you may just have to keep an eye on it. And as far as the size of pan, I have a lot of people ask me that. I'm using like a number eight Griswold. That's the pan that I use, number eight Griswold. And uh, I've always been confused about if you're measuring the inside, it is about 8 inches. If you measure across the top, though, it's about 10 inches. So you may just have to Google what is a uh, Griswold 8 to understand that for yourself. But that's what I, what I use. That's my cornbread pan. Here, 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 and bread and onions and salt okay. and pepper. And then I'll spin around three times and I'll do a pirouette. Okay, everybody would love to see that. <laughs> Matt went ahead and sliced up the sirloin so it'd just be easier. Potatoes look good. I did end up putting the mayonnaise in the slaw. Mm. I think it'll still be good. Yeah, A lot of you told me that was what I was supposed to do, so I'm positive it will be. I know it'll be good. Even surprised you with a green onion. That is sweet. Everything looks, looks really good. You may have noticed my new knives over there. Matt said I should tell you about them. They are J.A. Hinkle. 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 With a K. With a K. Hinkle. They're really nice. Matt got them for me. I only used them for a day, but so far we all really, really like them. I think I'm going to get my cornbread and put some of the, put my potatoes and stuff over top of it like I usually do. Oh, okay. 
I need something though to get some, some of the juice. Well, I don't want to interrupt you. You can. Katie's worrying about interrupting me. You go ahead. Go right ahead. Get you that. Go ahead. Get the potatoes. Get some potatoes. Well, boy, you got a big potato. You got like one. <laughs> Well, I always say I don't want to wait. I, had a, I hate can't stand wasting stuff. So I'll, if I eat this, I'll come back for another. Okay. So this is the canned coleslaw, Katie, and this time I put mayonnaise in it, and I think it's really good. I've already tasted it. Tasted a little bite. Is it know, windy? Not too bad. If you want to taste it a little bit gum. and taste. I shouldn't have been chewing gum, huh? Get a little bit to try. Maybe you'd like the green onion, though. Oh, yeah. Thank you, buddy. Katie loves the green onion. I could eat them and eat them and eat them. Get me a piece of meat. And you got to get me a green onion. And I like to, with the green onions, I've told you this before, and I'm sure you probably do it, too, but I put out a little bit of salt and then dip my onion in it every time I eat it. I need a fork, too. Corey told me to get her one. I'll come back for an onion. I'll come back for Corey green onion. First, I'm going to taste the roast and see what it tastes like. Oh, I got a little piece of cornbread. Mm. Really good. Mm. Really good and so easy to make. Especially easy if you just use the Lipton, Lipton onion soup, the little packet. You can probably buy it in other brands too besides Lipton. That's just the only one I'm familiar with. Now I've got to see how strong the onion is. Not too bad. Hmm. Not too bad at all. Amazing that we planted it last fall and it's been growing all winter. And now here we are eating it in March. I love that. I love anything that grows like that that we can eat. Nice to know too that we grew the cabbage that we made the made the slaw out of and I can't remember for sure there's carrots in it. Maybe we grew them so we did grow some carrots and some peppers. Maybe we grew them. I bet we grew the peppers for sure. Anyway, really rewarding. I hope you enjoyed seeing how easy it is to make this pot roast like Granny used to make. I'm hoping that our, our pie I really firmed up so that we can have that for dessert. As always, I'm glad that you stopped by to help me celebrate Appalachia.